What is good, my beautiful people? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm showing you guys a super simple yet crazy powerful technique in DaVinci Resolve to get cinematic saturation in just seconds. And no, we're not doing this the wrong way by using the global saturation slider. First, we'll break down the technique step by step, then I'll give you an explanation of what is going on under the hood, and then I'll show you how to dial in both rich cinematic saturation and controlled cinematic desaturation. Let's go ahead and head into Resolve. All right, guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve. And first, let's go ahead and talk about our color management real quick. We're going to go to File, Project Settings. For our color science, we're using the DaVinci YRGB Color Manage Timeline with the color processing mode of the HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then we are going to be going to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 because that is what our display is calibrated to, which also matches what we are delivering. So. I have my clip here. The only thing that I actually did was just a slight camera raw adjustment. And from there, we go ahead and denoise, add in some sharpness, do a quick color balance. And then I use a parallel series of nodes to go ahead and add in my contrast. And then I go ahead and I add in my look and I refine that looks black point right here so that we're a little bit more neutral when it comes to that black point. Just showing you guys the process, but here's what we're really going after, and it's our saturation trick, right? So we're gonna go ahead and create three nodes, one, two, and three, and we're gonna click on node 10 right here, the first one we created. We're gonna change the color space to HSL, and then we're gonna go under to channels and turn off channel one, in channel two, or channel three, my bad, channel one and channel three. Go ahead and copy that and paste that onto the other two nodes. And then in node 12, we're gonna change that middle one to HSV. The reason why we're turning off channels one and three is because we're only trying to work with the saturation aspect of those color spaces. So HSL stands for hue, saturation, luminance, hue one, saturation two, luminance three. Same thing with hue, saturation, value, HSV, hue one, saturation two, value three. So we're turning off the hue and the luminance and or value portions and only working with the saturation aspects. Now here's how I'm going to approach the saturation. I'm going to show you the technique and then I'm going to explain to you what's happening. In our first node that we created right here with HSL, we're going to use our gain wheel and turn the saturation down to 50%. So we're just going to go down to 0.5. We're using specifically the gain wheel. Now, in our second node that we created with HSV, this is where we can add in our color density. So I'm going to increase this to my liking. And then we're going to come over to our other note because I know what you're thinking like, oh, Sydney, you did too much. Now we're going to pull it back in our last HSL node. I'm probably fine somewhere around here. Now we can go ahead and create a compound node here and see what we did here. Do you see how that's a subtle change? Now, I want to just real quick, let's grab a still here of this. And then I'm going to turn this off. And then we're going to use the saturation tool right here to just see the difference between increasing saturation just slightly. And now let's play our still. Look at the difference. Do you see that difference here? So you're probably wondering what's going on. How does this work under the hood? So we're using HSL in our first and third nodes, specifically node 10 and node 12, because the luminance mode in HSL treats saturation independently of brightness. This allows us to attune or finesse the saturation cleanly using the gain wheel without affecting the perceived brightness. HSV, on the other hand, which is our node 11, defines saturation relative to the maximum RGB component. So increasing gain here boosts saturation in a way that feels more dense and contrasty, which is great for cinematic color weight. This separation lets us compress the saturation non-destructively first, 
right? So how we brought it back down to 50%, then rebuild it with richer color volume. So how I pushed it in Node 11, and then finally refine the overall color balance with a cleaner roll off at the end. How I was like, hey, this is looking grotesque. Let's go ahead and pull it back. So now let's go ahead and look at it in an example and just so I can show you how quickly we can work with this. So here we have our next example and I wanna use this example just to show you how quickly you can go through and do this method. So I'm gonna go ahead and create our three nodes. We're gonna go ahead and change the color space in the first one. I am intentionally going quick here on purpose, turning off channels one and three, copying, pasting, pasting, and changing the color space on number two right there, number 15. So now again, I'm gonna pull back to 50%. And now I think this is a case where I'm probably really gonna push the density in HSV and then really come back hard on the saturation. I'm gonna keep pushing, I'm gonna keep pushing, I'm gonna keep pushing. probably around right here. I'm gonna stop, I'm liking this, but now me watch, watch how we finesse this. Do you see how we brought that back? So then right there, if we just go ahead and create a compound node, turn it off and on, that is the result we got. Versus if we were to just use our saturation tool right here. We'll go ahead and open up the gallery, grab a still and play it. Look at the difference between the saturation tool and this method here. So we've talked about saturation. Let's go ahead and talk about desaturation now. So I've essentially applied the grade that we had here to this clip here. It's shot in the same area. I just tweaked a little bit of the colors that we had going on here as far as mixing goes. But outside of that, we've kept these saturation values the same. And what you're noticing here is even though we kind of refined it, it's still a little grotesque in my mind. Like, I don't hate this. I think this could be a good look. I don't dislike it. But we could do something a little bit different here. So this is where I'm actually going to pull the saturation down at the end by quite a bit, right? So maybe right about here, but check this out. When I come back in here and I push that color density, so I'm gonna push it and I'm going back and forth and I'm just finessing And right there, I'm loving that. I'm loving that. Now you don't have to be this desaturated, right? You see what I did was I really increased that color density there. And then I really pulled back the saturation because if we don't have that, like we're, we're, you see what's happening here? So we're really pulling that saturation back. If you want to be a little bit more liberal there, boom. Now you have some more warmth in this area. And overall, this is where we start it. This is where we're ending. And when we're looking at what we're doing with the saturation, just with that saturation trick. Here's our grade. We did our contrast. We did our look like we've talked about. I'm going to create those three nodes again. You guys know the drill. So we're going to come here, HSL. Again, changing channel one, turning it off changing channel three. And so now we're going to get a copy this paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, boom. And going back. So we're just working with the saturation channel across all of these. And again, we're going to come back by 50%. And then I'm going to bring up that density again, like we talked about. probably somewhere around here. And then I'm going to bring down the saturation again. And I may just push ever so slightly.
right about there. And I'm liking that. I'm liking that look that we have. Now we can go over to our other clip that's right here. I'm going to apply the grade from prior. There's a couple of things that I just don't like here. <laughs> so I think the first thing is I'm going to bring down, let me find a good place to stop. Let's stop right about here because we have something in that's sharp. I'm going to bring down my gamma here a bit. I'm also just going to bring down my lift for the contrast. I'm going to back off in my color mixing on his skin tones a bit, but I'm also going to pull the saturation down a bit more here. Just that little bit that I did right there. I'm liking that before after we look at what we're doing here with all of these nodes. I don't mind this. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind this look, but I'm liking the desaturated look a little bit better. Just in this case, it's a little bit grittier for me. Either one is fine, but for the purpose of what I'm trying to show you, that's what we're going for. As much as I love this color technique, I cannot take credit for this myself. I learned this technique from one of my friends who's also a colorist named Derek Morrison. Their links to their Instagram are in the description down below as well to their LinkedIn. But with that being said, guys, that is how I approach all of my saturation techniques. I know we have the color density tool in DaVinci Resolve now, and simply put, I don't like it. I like this because I feel like it gives me more control. So if you like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. If you have not, follow me on social media. The links are in the description down below and leave me a comment telling me what you think about this technique. Now, more than ever, my beautiful people, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired. And as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney. I'll see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.